Today we are at Lamlash on the Isle of Arran and we're at the former St Bride's Chapel and the traditional burial ground of the Fullertons. Welcome to Exploring Scotland's History. There's obviously an element of subsidence in the ground and we're shoring all the headstones up with two by twos which is better than letting some poor soul's headstone break into you on the way to the ground. Mm. And with every graveyard we seem to visit, you know, the poor young souls that were sacrificed in the First World War. Walker had been pensioned off after having first received orders to proceed to France. Back in Lamlash, he died of pulmonary tuberculosis. This disease was known as the King's Touch because in the 18th century it was believed that it could be cured if a monarch performed a laying of hands on the sufferer. James Archibald Crawford joined the Royal Navy at the age of 18. He served on the HMS Malaya at the Battle of Jutland. He was demobbed in April 1920 and died a month later from tuberculosis. Just between that headstone and the tree you can see the sun, the sunset beating down on Holy Island that's just off the coast of Arran. This McDermott grave is really quite something to behold. We have the torch of knowledge upturned, imagining signifying death, but then we have this absolute stunner on the top. The original church was built before 1337 because the Lord of Arran is recorded as giving the lands and the church to Kilwinning Abbey on that year. In 1505 the vicarage and the parsonage passed to the Hamilton family. Now, maybe watch out for them because I feel they'll be starring in a few videos now that we're in Arran. They owned probably most of Arran at one stage, a bit like the Campbells owning most of Argyle. So this is the former chapel and there's some really quite interesting headstones. In it. This one in particular, Lady Charlotte Frances Erskine, the eldest daughter of John Francis, Earl of Mar. It's hard to really show how deep, how wide, how tall this headstone really is. Oh no, that's okay, because Martin's filming me, filming him, I don't know. Clearly when the chapel went out of use, those that had a few quid came into the chapel for burial. Like all these older churches, we have the little umbrace, and I would suggest they are quite low to the ground that the floor, like so many of these churches, has also been raised. Old Kilbride Chapel here, or St Bride's, was abandoned in 1773, coinciding with the new church being built. And we will visit it. It's got something very interesting out the side of it. 
Here's another interesting headstone for John Stewart. His family hailed from Plata and I'll put a wee clip of that stunning wee island which we filmed when we got to the very bottom tip of Aaron today. There's obviously some kind of inspection going on with headstones at the minute. This one got a... <coughs> There's a lot like it, mainly in the old part of the cemetery it would seem. We've got various locals here. And we have one here, a Robert McGregor officer in excise in Arran. And he died in 1804. I would say, where Mr. McGregor is concerned, excise officers also come up quite a bit as we come round Aaron, so keep a watch out for them too. Though born in Doncaster in 1953, Donald spent 47 years running his chandlery shop in Lamlash riding on iron shipwrecks and diving. Described as often gruff, but sometimes genial, he had a hand in Lam Lash's Marine Festival and was a great lover of blues music and a family man. I think it might have one of the more spectacular views of graveyards that we have visited. Quite stunning. One of the more interesting headstones in this graveyard is actually quite a modern one, just a couple of years old, from Alison Prince. Martin, how long have we been looking for her headstone tonight? We have been up and down every aisle in this churchyard and I can't find the lady, but her story is worth telling, so here it is. Alison Prince was born in London in 1931 and moved to Arran in 1981. She was a scriptwriter for TV shows such as Watch for Mother and my personal favourite, Trumpton. Not only was she a children's writer, she wrote a great amount for adults. Her accounts of living through World War II are particularly riveting. She was also an accomplished clarinet player and took part in the Arran Jazz Band. She was a strong protester of the fish farm development in Scotland. She passed on the 12th of October 2019, aged 88, leaving a daughter and three sons. So this is what replaced and brides and I would suggest that might be the original fault. Some very fine ironwork. Sadly parts of the sandstone, the sea has got them. It's quite dark now but I'm going to show you what makes this church a wee bit different. This edifice here. Is it a storeroom? Is it a ducat? No, it's a night house. So that was Old St Brides and the new church at Lam Lash. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. It really helps the channel grow. Until next time, thank you for watching.